This segment brought to you by Bravo Company USA. Hey gang, Larry Vickers here, Vickers Tactical Channel. And today I have a rifle for you, which is one of the reasons why you come back to this channel, a true moon rock. The HK MR308 A3-28 20 inch barrel. Now what is that? The HK MR308 is the semi-automatic version of the HK417 in Europe, okay? Now, a3 is the updated one, has some ambi controls just like you saw in the G28. The 28 here ties it into the G28 family and 20 inches for 20 inch barrel. They also make them in a 16 and a half inch barrel. Why did I bring this out? Well, in and of its own, it's a very rare gun. But I really brought it out to represent to you kind of a weapon that is being fielded today by the U.S. military, including the optic. Now, let me start up front. And I'll take you all the way through it. Now, up here you have a standard HK style flash suppressor. You see on the G36, you see it on the G3, you see it on the HK417, a real standard setup. Now, when you see the G28 series, which is what this gun is essentially templated on, it has a longer flash suppressor, more along the lines that you see on an FNFAL or a MAG-58 or something along those lines, or an M14, a longer birdcage. So that's a little bit different up front. Fairly heavy barrel coming back. Hammer forged, of course, like all HK barrels, chrome line boring chamber. Coming farther back, free float rail with a fold up front sight. Now, one of the interesting things about this extended rail, and to HK's credit, they did a good job on this, because Americans like extended rails. But notice they, they put no Picatinny portions out farther. So the farthest you can put a bipod is here, which means if you put it out here, they've already tested it and had a laser, it, there'll be enough deviation that you will have zero shift. So the theory is this is as far as we want you to put a bipod. So even if you put a laser or something out here, you're not gonna lose zero by too much of a zero shift, which is pretty smart thinking on their behalf. You come back here, you see the two cross bolts. Classic HK, on the 416, they have one single cross bolt. On the 762 NATO guns, they have two cross bolts, and that's how this handguard interfaces to the receiver and the trunnion area. Coming back farther, you have Flat Dark Earth, or RAL8000. It's kind of known in NATO spec, upper and lower receiver. Unlike an original G28, the original G28 has a steel upper receiver. This gun and many of the other G28 variants, like the ones that are being fielded by the US military, have an aluminum upper. And we've shot enough guns over here, AR style accurized rifles like SR25s and whatnot, that have an aluminum uppers and lowers. We realized there's no reason to do that steel upper. That was kind of a waste. And unfortunately for the guy carrying it around, those ounces add up over many, many miles. Okay. Control-wise, remember this is an A3 variant of the MR308 family, so it has a lot of ambi controls. Ambi bolt release, where you can lock the bolt to the rear or release the bolt from either side of the gun. Ambi mag release, ambi selector. All right, coming back, it has a reversible charging handle, which means left or right hander can flip the lever from one side to the other. Okay, the closest thing to this rifle in the US military is known as the M110A1 SDMR. What we have here is the exact scope and mount used on that rifle. It's a front focal plane scope made by Sig Sauer. It's called the Tango 6T. This is the Alpha 4 mount. Now this is not the same mount that is sold with this scope on the civilian market. It is only used in the military. All right, the normal scope has a throw lever mount with it. One to six magnification, very high definition glass. As you can see, flat dark earth finish. 11 illumination settings, waterproof down to 20 meters, also has a hash mark here to level it up in the field in case you dismount it and mount it back into the scope mount. And like I said, this is the exact scope fielded in the US military with the M110 SDMR. Ambi sling loops, right? Coming back farther, you have a 
retractable buttstock on an original Armalite AR-10 diameter buffer tube. Unlike what you see in the United States with SR-25s and whatnot, they use a buffer tube the diameter of an M16. This one uses an original AR-10 by Armalite, the original Armalite buffer tube diameter, which is a good thing in HK's behalf. Now notice the cheek piece, it's adjustable and it's also spring loaded. You can adjust it for height to get you the correct height behind the optic that you need. And also it's spring loaded. So if you rack the charging handle, you don't have to worry about binding up. The length of pull is adjustable here with this wheel. And then once again, you have yet another set of ambi sling loops here in the rear. Overall, pretty cool trigger on the gun. I mean, is it a match grade trigger? You know what, for a combat rifle, yeah. For shooting at Camp Perry, probably not. 20 round magazine, which is essentially in a large G36 magazine with kind of that smokish green color where you can see the amount of rounds you have left in the magazine. On the right hand side, you have an RAL 8000 or flat dark earth ejection port cover. Overall, really cool gun. One of the rarest guns we've ever had on this channel, virtually unknown. I almost, unless you're a serious HK guy, you've never seen it or probably know anything about it. It's just another weapon that is carried off of the G28 series, which was a huge success for HK and continues to be. The fact that the US military is fielding variations of the G28 as a semi-automatic sniper rifle and a designated marksman rifle kind of says it all. We're fixing to light it up for you, Vickers tactical style. We got ammo on board, MagTech 762 NATO. Stay tuned. Hey, Larry Vickers here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Click here to subscribe to the Vickers Tactical channel and take time out to check out some of our other favorite videos.